Robert L. Bob Evans was born May 30, 1918, in the small village of Sugar Ridge, Ohio. At the time of his birth, Ohio, the nation and the world, was in a state of upheaval and uncertainty. Despite the ongoing war in Europe, it was also a time of infinite possibility. Bob's father Stanley was a grocer at the time, and he and his wife Elizabeth sought a niche where an independent could still operate and make a decent salary. Ultimately, Stanley decided to move to Gaddy County, where Bob and his two sisters could grow up in the company of their many aunts, uncles, and cousins. Bob Evans attended Gaddy Academy High School, where he made less than perfect grades. Bob liked to joke, I was so smart they voted me freshman class president two years in a row. Junior year, Bob was lured to Greenbrier Military School by the promise that he could play football. Gaddy Academy had written him off as a lightweight, and that he could also take his favorite hunting dog. The two years Bob spent at Greenbrier played a pivotal role in shaping him into a more focused, more productive young man. When Bob left for Lewisburg, West Virginia, he was a little mischievous, and Greenbrier Military School served to concentrate all of his excess energy. The sophomore at Guy Academy was remembered by classmate Jewel Waters as a rough-edged Tom Sawyer, who made his fair share of appearances in the principal's office. Soon after his return from Greenbrier, Bob eloped with Jewel Waters in what later Bob's father Stanley would call the greatest decision Bob ever made. After they said their I do's on June 1, 1940, Bob went to work as a salesman. He was an exceptional salesman, but he was first and foremost a farmer. When drafted into the army in 1944, Bob and Jewel sold their 27-acre farm. During his one-year stint for Uncle Sam, Bob saw plenty of enemy soldiers, but never participated in combat. Evans Man POW Camps on U.S. Soil Fresh home from war, Bob Evans opened the Terminal Steakhouse in Gapolis. The whitewashed brick building, which housed only 12 stools, was more like a hot dog stand than a diner. Not far from the steakhouse stood Bob's lone advertisement that read, No beer, just fine food. At lunchtime, customers would be lined up four deep behind each stool waiting to order their affordable homemade meal. And affordable is what they got. Ground beef steak, french fries, and salad for 85 cents. A dime would get you a cup of coffee, and for 20 cents, you could get a piece of Jules' homemade pie. However, Bob Evans was not satisfied. Sausage in that day was a seasonal meat. A diner who ordered sausage in the 1940s had about as much of a chance of finding lean pork as a man opening a can of pork and beans. Bob refused to serve such low-quality meat. He always believed that the most expensive way to get rid of bad food was to serve it to the customers. From this idea sprung Springfield Farm Sausage. The first sausage making took place in concrete block structure, no larger than a two-car garage. Bob decided to use better cuts than used by his competitors, and only put hams and tenderloins into a sausage. His method was criticized, but soon brought him instant success. Truckers passing by on U.S. Route 35 would request 5- and 10-pound bins of sausage to take home to their families. The year after he opened the steakhouse, Bob opened the drive-in restaurant directly next to it. The menu included a pair of signature sandwiches, the Dutch Boy and the Dutch Girl. Once Bob Evans had the steakhouse up and running in late 1945 and two sausage plants in full production in 1954, he caught his breath long enough to purchase the farm of which he dreamed, Homestead Farm. The homestead was a laboratory where Bob was continually experimenting with the earth and the livestock. It was here where commercials advertising Bob Evans sausage and inviting customers to come on down to the farm were filmed. Many curiosity seekers took him up on the offer, inspiring Bob to open what would later be called the sausage shop just down the hill from the homestead. Sporting only four stools and six small tables, the sausage shop was even smaller than the original steakhouse. The sausage shop gained tremendous followings, and only two years after opening, Bob Evans Farm Incorporated went public. By the time the 1960s arrived, the business Bob had launched in Appalachia was changing the way the nation viewed a product consumers had once looked down upon. However, Bob Evans realized that his business depended solely on hog prices and if he was going to thrive, he would need to diversify. He and wife Jewel set out to do just that. Jewel tested and designed a downhole menu. 
The breakfast fare was eggs, sausage, hash browns, pancakes, waffles, and biscuits. For lunch and dinner, made from scratch biscuits, country ham, sausage steak, smoked sausage, and chicken with noodles. When Bob Evans Farm Incorporated began their expansion, Bob personally picked locations. If Bob knew that Shoney's or Denny's were doing big business, he would go right across the street from them. For one thing, Bob Evans didn't look like any other restaurant. The exterior was a bright barn red trimmed in white with a signature keyhole notch. Before long, Bob Evans restaurants were popping up all over Ohio. There was no particular mystique that drew customers to the restaurants. They sold quality. By the time Bob Evans retired in 1986, Bob Evans Farms Incorporated owned and operated 165 restaurants, and today that number reaches over 300. The man with the million ideas decided to devote some of his time on causes about which he had great concerns, preservation of the family farm, year-round grazing, protecting the nation's wild horses, conservation, and inspiring young people around him. Bob Evans was particularly captivated by one breed of wild horses, the endangered Spanish Barb. Bob's interest in protecting the Spanish Barb dates back several years before his retirement. Bob Evans would send family friends out west to fetch the wild horse. Originally, Bob Evans purchased five Spanish Barbs to breed on the farm. Soon, those five became 29. Bob recalled what a significant role horses had played in the lives of his children and began the annual 4-H horse giveaway. Each year, he gave 10 promising young children a quarter horse in order to teach them responsibility, self-reliance, confidence, and pleasure. It was this love of children that encouraged Bob to create the Ohio Appalachian Center for Higher Education. Not long after he was appointed to the Ohio Board of Regents, Bob sought to fill the void in Appalachian education. Through this center, Bob promoted the importance of college education and also provided financial support for the area's youth. Since 1969, Bob has received well over 30 awards, ranging from Conservationist of the Year to the Ohio Governor's Award. Bob Evans passed away June 21, 2007 at the age of 89. Sometime before his death, Bob Evans said in an interview, When I leave this world, I want to leave it better than when I was here. And that he did. Bob Evans continues to affect the lives of Americans every day. Not only did he improve the quality of sausage and set a precedent for entrepreneurs, he improved the quality of life for countless young Appalachians. Up before the daylight, a lot of chores lie ahead. Mama's downstairs cooking while he's getting out of bed. The importance of a breakfast is mighty big on a working farm. You go to bed with the chickens and the roosters, you're alarmed. Bobby grew with big ambitions, seldom had the time for play. Said he'd be more than a farmer, but he wouldn't move away. With a simple plan and vision, facing failures and his fears, he made a little country restaurant, and we've eaten there for years. He dreamed of something a whole lot finer than twelve stools diner no one knew his dream would grow in that little river town it took more than a mind for business treat the folks with love and kindness for this guy in county farm boy people drove for miles around as a farmer a neighbor and a visionary bob evans showed the ohio soil was good for growing a lot of things including one remarkable legacy. Bob Evans, down on the farm.